Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to deploy new networks uh, that we have trained in the Teachable machine. And in this video here, we're going to deploy it with OpenSV. So in the last video, I just showed you how we can load in an image with the pill uh, module and how we can actually just pass that image through our neural network that we have trained in the Teachable machine and then export it to our own Python script so we can use it in our own applications and our own projects. But this video here, we're going to load in from the webcam. So we're going to use the OpenCV to load in the webcam images and then pass those images through our neural network to do predictions on that. So we're using OpenCV instead in this video here so we can see how we can actually like just use the Teachable machine to create a classifier and then how we can deploy that neural network that we have trained in the cloud in the Teachable machine with OpenCV. But first of all, remember to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. And you can join the channel, chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, AI, and so on. You can all become a member of the channel here if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee. And also remember to hit the subscribe button under the video. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way. And I'm just really excited and really happy about this small community here that we're building and we're learning from each other. So thank you guys. So first of all here, as in the previous video, I just want to like have a short summary over what we have done and how we exported the model. And then we're going to open up our Python script and then actually like load it in by just copy pasting the code that we got from the code snippet here in the Teachable machine. So first of all, when we want to create a classifier, we can create like different kind of classes over here to the left. So we created three classes. We have thumbs up class, we have victory sign class, and then we also had the wave class. So we created three different classes. We trained our model after we've created the classes and we can even generate our data set inside of the Teachable machine here. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure to check that out before I'll link to it up here. And then you can, then you can see like the whole process of like how we can open up the webcam, uh, generate the actual images that we want for each of the classes. And when we have generated our, our data sets and all the classes that we want, we can just hit this train model here. We can also do some advanced tabs where we can change like the number of epochs that we want to train our model for and so on. And then we train our model, we can see the actual output over here to the right uh, in that video. And then we can actually like export our model as well. So we just download the model to our computer. We get a small code snippet of like how we can actually like import that model later on in our own Python script and in our own applications. And one of the main things here about the Teachable machine is that we can actually like employ or like deploy these things here on a better devices or like just standard um, standard like laptops and we get a really efficient and really fast neural network that we can pass our images through. So it's really fast, it's really efficient. We don't have to like think about like how can we generate our data? How can we train a model? It does everything for us. So it's really, really nice. So if we just hit this export model uh, button here, we can see that we both get for TensorFlow JavaScript, TensorFlow Lite, if we want to uh, deploy our neural networks on embedded devices. If we, for example, want to use uh, the, the Google Edge TPU, how we can deploy it on that. If we're using the curl, for example, like the, the Edge device for uh, for running neural network inference on a TPU uh, that Google created. And we can also have like just the standard TensorFlow uh, framework here that we're going to use in this video. And then we're going to combine it with OpenCV so we can actually like open up uh, our webcam with OpenCV, do all the processing we want to do on our images with OpenCV and just use OpenCV as we've been, like, been doing the whole tutorial here and throughout the whole channel here actually, like all the videos. And then we can just load in the model with, Ker with Keras and TensorFlow. And then we just pass our, our, uh, our image through that neural network and we get a prediction or like an output that we can then use to do our classification and we also get a confidence score of how certain we are that we're actually like making the prediction. So here we just have this code snippet here that I just copy pasted into the previous video where we just used the pill, uh, pill module to actually like just load an image, pass it through the neural network. But in this video, as I already said, we're going to combine it with OpenCV. So now we're jump straight into Visual Studio code here um, and I'm going to show you how we can actually like set it up with OpenCV. So I just used the, uh, used the code the code snippet from the Teachable machine as a baseline, and then I just changed it to uh, to OpenCV here instead of using the pill library. So we're actually, we're just going to um, load in the model as we did in the previous video. But in this video here, we're going to use OpenCV to load in the images from our webcam, and then we're just going to like uh, play around with it with some of the different kind of OpenCV uh, methods that we can use. So for example, resize the image because we need to do some image pre-processing to our image before we're passing it through the actual neural network. So first of all here, we're just going to import a carers, uh, TensorFlow carers, OMCV here with the CV2. We have NumPy and then we have time. So we can actually like time our neural network, how long it takes to do a forward pass in a neural network. So we can also at the end of the video, um, we can see how efficient and how fast our neural network actually like is when we have just like passed our images 
through TG1 machine. It generated a neural network for us. It trained a neural network for us. And then we just get an output neural network that we didn't deploy. And then we can see like how fast and efficient that is compared to if we were going to create our own neural network that will take like probably um, an hour or like maybe a couple of hours if you're not really familiar or you don't have experience with creating neural networks. Now we can just go in, create neural networks, create deep learning uh, models for doing classification within like five minutes, five, 10 minutes, you can create a neural network. Then if you just pass your images through it and you can actually like have a classifier that can classify between, uh, like between all the classes that you have trained your model on. So it's really nice, really efficient. You can create some really nice and fast applications with it. And also if you're not familiar uh, with deep learning and you're just using computer vision and you just want to like try this out and play around with it, it's really, really good. So I definitely recommend it. So here we're just going to load in uh, the model as we've done in the previous video as well. So we just call this function or like this method here from TensorFlow. So we're just loading in uh, the model. Then we're also opening up the labels. So we have this, as we can see, when we have exported the model, we get our model here with the carrot underscore model. And then we have an H5 format. So we both store the architecture and the weights of our neural network in this, uh, in this file here. And when we export a model, we also get the labels for all of our classes. So we can actually like, uh, say what class uh, do the neural network actually predict. And if we just open up this, this file, we can see that we both have a thumbs up, we have a wave and we have a victory, and then we have the corresponding indexes to those classes that we created. Then we're, then we're going to have this classification Python script where we just go back here again. Then first of all, we need to create some data here. So we're going to create an array of the right shape to feed into the carrot model because we need to have this, uh, like we need to pass in like a batch. So in this case here, we're just uh, setting it equal to one because we just want to do one forward pass of our neural network as a, at a time. And that's why we have a one here uh, in the shape. And then we have 224 times 224 and three here at the end. So this is the dimensions of the image. And we have a square image in this example here, but when I'm going to load up my webcam, we don't have a squared image. So we're going to resize that with OMSV. So we're going to use OMSV. We're going to use some of the methods from OMSV. Then we're going to combine uh, like convert it to NumPy before we can actually like pass that NumPy array uh, through our neural network because we can actually use all different kind of modules and frameworks because we just need to like uh, convert it back to NumPy, which is just like a standard uh, standard like uh, array or like and this is the standard array, array that we pass through our neural network. And then we have three channels here because we're operating with uh, with RGB images, so we have color images. We're going to specify the size here that we can then use later on to actually like resize our image. We have our capture here, so we're just going, going to open up the webcam. We have cap uh, on the equals to cv 2video capture, and then we take the service element, so this will just be the first webcam or like the first camera that I've connected to my computer. Then we have a while loop that is just running while the webcam is actually like open. We're going to start a timer so we can time how long it takes to do all of this processing so we can see the efficiency and how fast our neural network acts like is. Then we're going to read in uh, the image from a webcam. We're going to set the height width and the channel here equal to the shape of the image. And then we need to scale value because our webcam is not, uh, is not, um, it's not a square. So we need to actually like have a scale value. So when we resize our image, we actually like take into account that we uh, that we're trying to scale, like we're trying to scale down an image that is not square to an image that is square uh, with these dimensions here, 224 times 224. So we have to scale value here that we need to scale in the X direction. So we just take the width divided by the height and that will be around uh, 1.33 uh, in this example here in my case. And then we can just go down here and actually like resize our image. So we're going to pass in the original image. We're going to pass in the, the desired size of our image that we want. So we want 224 times 224 because that is the format uh, of the image that we need to pass through our neural network. And then we have the scaling value here in the X direction, which is the uh, which is equal to the scale value uh, of the width divided by the height because we don't have a square image and we want to resize it and scale it down to a square image. So we need to take that into account in our X direction um, when we're resizing our image. And in the Y direction, we're just scaling uh, with a value of one in this example. And then we're using inter-nearest interpolation here to actually like resize our image. So now we have everything. Uh, now we have like everything from OpenCV. So now we can do the exact same thing as we did in the last video, where we just use the code that was provided in the code snippet from uh, the Teachable machine. 
So here we're just going to set our image now as an, a NumPy array. So we can then do uh, NumPy operations on that um, on that array instead of using Opus V or any other library or module that you use to actually load in your image. Then we're going to normalize our array where we just like divide all of our values with 127 uh, and then we have a minus one here at the end. It just means that all of our pixel values will be b between minus one and one because when we actually like train neural networks and so on, uh, we want our images to be in that format. And if you want to know why, definitely go check my deep learning tutorial out uh, where I go into like more details about like the basics or like the theory behind neural networks, how they work and how they're most efficient. Then we're going to load in our, our, our data or like an image into the array. We have this data at the zero of the element. And that was the array that we created up here with this shape here. So we just have one image and then we have the dimensions, uh, the dimensions of our image. So now we have to like have the image load into the array and we can now just pass that array through our neural network and actually like do a forward pass um, of our array or our image through the neural network. So to actually like run the inference, we're just having this predict variable where we will store the prediction. And then we set that equal to our model dot predict. So this is just a, um, a method from TensorFlow that we're going to use. And then we just pass our, uh, our data that we want to do a forward pass off uh, in our model here. And then we will actually like have predictions stored in this variable. Then we just take the index here of the argmax, which is the actual like prediction. So we want to find what have we actually like classified this image to be. Then we're going to find the actual like class name because we're taking the index of the class names that we loaded in from the files. And we also get a confidence score here, which will just be the index of our predictions that we got from our model. So now we both have the, the predicted class name and also the confidence score of that prediction. Then we're just going to end our timer so we can actually get the number of frames per second. And our number of frames per second will be equal to one divided by the total time. And here I'm just going to put out some text here. So we're going to, going to put out uh, the frames per second on our image that we're going to show later on. And we're also going to like um, put the text here of the class name and also the confidence score uh, with a percentage so we can see like this this is actually like a 99% uh, accuracy score on this prediction that is doing right now. Then we just have the two image shows down here. So we're both going to see like how the image actually like looks when it's resized and we're also going to see the original image uh, before we doing any operations at all. At the end of the program we just have this await key here so we're waiting if we hit uh, if we hit a cube or like escape at some time in our program, we will terminate our program. We will destroy all the windows here that we have opened up with OpenCV, and we're also going to release the webcam so we can open it up at a later time, and then our pro program will actually like terminate. So we'll now run the program here and see what it actually like does and how it makes the predictions uh, here. So if we just go down here, we can see that now uh, we are actually like opening up uh, TensorFlow. So now we're loading TensorFlow here and then we can see the original image and we can also see the resized image which will be the actual like, input uh, to our neural network. We can both see the predictions and also the confidence score and the number of frames per seconds down here at the bottom. So now we can see that it now it just flickers around because we don't really have like a default uh, hand gesture when there's no hand gestures at all. So it just flickers around like between wave and the victory sign. But if we go up here and make for example the victory sign we can see that it just directly goes to like 99 almost 100% accuracy on the victory sign. So it has really it has really trained really good on the victory sign here. And if we do, for example, the thumbs up, we can see that sometimes it flickers around this thumbs up and the victory sign depending on like where it is in the image frame. But we can see that we have trained the, the thumbs up here uh, pretty good. Uh, and we can see that we get up to like 90, 95, 97% accuracy with the thumbs up. And if I take my other hand here in the image, it doesn't really know like what is going on because we haven't trained a model on two hands in the image at the same time. And we can also have the wave here. So we get around like 70, 80% uh, with the wave class here. And sometimes you go up to 90, 95, but it, it, it is more certain in the victory, uh, in the victory class here, we can see that it is almost hundred percent accuracy, even though we move it around in the image frame here uh, with the victory. So it's really, it is really trained really good on the victory hand gesture. We could have maybe have trained a bit more on the wave and also the thumbs up, moved it more around in the image frame here. So it got more certain, but we only had a uh, hundred samples in this, um, in this simple example here. So again, it's just really nice, really cool. You can just add more samples, add more specific situations. We can see that if there's two hands in the image frame, uh, it doesn't really know like what is going on. So actually like it got a thumbs up here 
uh, sometimes. So sometimes it actually like gets the thumbs up here. Uh, so sometimes it works, but not if you want specific situations and you want to predict those situations as well, you definitely need, need to know or and then like teach and generate data for that as well. And then uh, train your neural network on that data or like those specific situations as well. So thank you guys for watching this video here and remember to hit the subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future. Also leave some comments down uh, under the video here if you have some questions or you just want to make, like, make a comment. It really helps me and the YouTube channel out in a massive way and we're here to like help each other out, learn from each other and just create this uh, really nice and really cool um, community here that we have. So I'm currently also doing this computer vision tutorial as we've talked a bit about here throughout this video and also the deep learning tutorial. So if you want to go into more details with computer vision, like image operations, deep learning, like how neural network actually like works under the hood and how we can create our own neural network from scratch, I'll link to one of the tutorials up here or you can find them on my channel or else I'll see you in the next video guys. Bye for now.